favorite throwing stick. Actually, it's a wooden knife. I think it's called a wooden knife, really, technically. See where the lid is. This one. This lid. Yes, I think it is. And this lid needs a little bit of work. I can tell you. What I'm going to do, the lid, this lid, sometimes I forget you're there. This lid doesn't quite go all the way down. It goes in, but it doesn't go down. So I'm going to trim a little bit away right, right down here and define that just a little more so that it will go down. I think I'm going to do that with this. I don't know if this will fit in there, but I hope it will. See if that did it. It goes a little further down. I think it's a little bit tight still.
Let's see now. There, that's the kind of fit between here and here that I wanted. Now, with this in place, I'm going to try to trim this part. Let's see. I think it's still a little bit wide. This, you know, sticks too far out, and I think that I can take that down just a little bit more, and it would be more pleasing to the eye. And again, I like for my tops on these little garlic jars to be uh, flat so that they can be put down, they can be put down like this, and uh, you can do it one-handed because when you're in the kitchen, sometimes your hands are dirty or your hands are full. And, and you, you just don't have time to chase a lid uh, that's trying to roll off the cabinet because it has a little knob on the top and it doesn't sit straight or it doesn't stay where you put it. So, get up. Jazz it up a little. So there's one garlic keeper. Now I need to put some holes in it and we'll just mark the pattern. We'll just put three small holes there and directly opposite. We'll put one, two, three, four. So let me grab my
my holy tool. Be sure to hang on to your lid when you do this. This whole saw is a tool from Bill Van Gilder. Um, Bill Van Gilder Pottery. You can just Google Bill Van Gilder and buy it off of his website or I think that other clay supply companies also sell his tools. But this is probably the best tool um, I've ever seen for just, I mean, you don't have to keep up with a whole bunch of other sizes. It, all your sizes are right here on this one blade. It depends on how deep you go into the pot. Okay, so there's my pattern of four, and then let's go over here and we'll do the three. See, if I wanted to make a bigger hole, I would just push the knife in further. Pattern of three, pattern of four. I'll make these a little bigger. Okay, then dump all the stuff out, and you may want to take a sponge, or you may even want to burnish this around here, uh, because it won't be glazed, because you're going to leave this without glaze so that you can fire it with the lid in place. Okay, I will work on this one. I already have the holes in it and I've pretty much trimmed the top but I just want to do a little burnishing around here and then I'll turn it upside down and hit the bottom. This was a little rough right here. Nice. Okay. And I don't ever knock those little burrs off until the thing is uh, dry or ready to sponge because you can damage those little holes. And then you end up having to try to fix them. And that doesn't work too well. Okay.
on one side of this thing. I got a little carried away with the holes. It looks like I couldn't decide where to stop poking holes, so I just went nuts. Okay, and I think this one is probably done. And there's the little lid on that one. And there's a little four pattern there, and there's craziness there. That looks like a teapot uh, configuration. But since this one has more ventilation, I put less over here. So what I'll do is when these are uh, let really hard, uh, dried, I'll take a sponge and, and probably uh, that knife blade and just clean those out, make sure they're nice and smooth. And those two are done. 